Good afternoon, everybody. It's Stephen and Paul from Winextra bringing you your Friday edition of Daily Brief. We're going to have kind of a fun one today, This, I think. But we're first off, I think we should get the boring crap out of the way. What do you think, Paul? Should we? Uh, you don't get much boring than a bunch of, bunch of stats <laughs> that have been released that basically tell you that nothing has changed. Um, most of you in the U.S. wouldn't, you know, ever have come across this, but if you've lived in Europe, you would have come across on more recent versions of Windows when you turn on your computer that it would give you a ballot screen so that you could decide whether or not you want to use Internet Explorer or Firefox or Chrome or Safari. And this was all supposed to be in the interest of, you know, antitrust so that Microsoft couldn't blah, be blah, 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 So bundling blah, blah, their own blah, browser blah, blah, blah. with their own operating <laughs> system, you know, just like Apple. Anyway. Don't get me started. Anyway, so they introduced this screen that didn't put my IE first and let people make their choice. And you know what? It didn't Absolutely work. Absolutely nothing bloody changed. Nothing. People Not still chose up E. And the only winner of the marketplace was really Chrome. Yeah, they've gone up a bit. But you know what? We can't tell whether or not Chrome's increase has got anything to do with the ballot screen. No. Quite frankly, I don't think it does. I don't think it does either. It's... It's, it's, it's pointless. It, it's, it's government stepping in again where government doesn't belong, telling us what we can and can't do with our software. Um, don't get me started. Well, remember Windows N? <laughs> where, where they had to have a, have a version of Windows for the European market with no yeah, wimp? Yeah, ship without the media player. Yeah. And the consumers spoke with their pockets and nobody purchased it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants to do with the media player. <laughs> like, why, why doesn't Europe just learn its lesson and shut the hell up? I don't think it's much a European thing as it is a bureaucratic thing. And I think, you know, in every bureaucracy, you get some numbnut that thinks it's a good idea to force these ideas. And especially because you get lots of whiny companies that see the the success of larger companies like Microsoft and say, well, you know, why isn't my browser doing so well on, on the Microsoft platform? And it's maybe because your browser sucks ass <laughs> in comparison to the other browsers that are out there. It, and, you know, having a ballot screen isn't going to improve anything for you at all, as we have proved. Yeah. <clears throat> Move on, <laughs> before I start ranting. <laughs> oh, God. And mark, we, we might as well mark this next one up in the, you know, this was to be expected category. Microsoft, our strategy with Silverlight has shifted. Duh. Uh, duh, yeah. It would be nice if they told us what their <laughs> strategy with Silverlight has shifted to. Well, they um, do in the post. It's form for cross-development with Windows um, phone 7 and other platforms, but you know what, Silverlight has the problem of a lot of the functionality that is in Flash and Silverlight is now yeah. appearing in HTML5 as it develops. And then there's the fact that in comparison to Flash, Microsoft has very little market share with Silverlight. And so Flash is the proprietary standard, but it's the de facto standard because it's just ubiquitous. Silverlight is trying to gain ground in that area. This was probably the only reason why we paid any sort of heed to the idea of Microsoft possibly buying Adobe with, uh, or yeah. Adobe, so they'd have that market share. And But now, just like everything else, we're seeing that Adobe is um, focusing a lot on HTML5 yeah. development with, yeah. their, with their upcoming tools, and Flash is becoming really more and more of a fallback. Yeah. So... You know, this isn't a surprise. We are going to see another uh, iteration of Silverlight come out. Yeah. We are going to see it as a, a key development tool for Windows Phone 7. And I wouldn't be but at all surprised... This isn't a story. I wouldn't be at all surprised, too, if it doesn't become the preferred development tool for any future tablet work. I know you Again, and I disagree on that, but, you know... Depends on the direction that yeah, they take with yeah, tablets. Yeah. But now... Let's get off this boring yeah, bloody stuff. Yeah. It's supposed Let's, to be a consumer show. Let's get on to something more interesting like video games. Because I like video games. I know you do. Um, Major Nelson has just reported that there is one billion entertainment hours spent on Xbox Live 
every month. Well, you know what? I'm not surprised. I mean, let's start. Something we haven't mentioned yet. We probably should have put in the show notes if we didn't. But Microsoft has just had a record yeah. quarter again. Okay? Yeah. 16 point something billion dollars pulled in in a couple yeah. of months. Large part of that is Xbox, which is up in sales massively. Yeah, what was it? Halo Reach has brought them something like $365 million, I think I saw somewhere. That's. Yeah, we talked about this a couple of weeks yeah. ago, and it was like $200 million anyway off opening yeah. day. Alone. So, yeah, we're not surprised by that. But, you know, Xbox is becoming very, very dominant in the living room. It's been sold in 42 million countries. We've seen in the last year a 157% increase in uh, usage for viewing TVs. Uh, for Sorry, for viewing music and television. And, of course, it's not just kids that are using this. With over 42% of Xbox Live Gold members, yeah. they're the paying members yeah. uh, in the U.S. being over the... Uh, what are they? Um, 30 hours a well, it's not just that they're using 30 hours um, uh, of digitally distributed television uh, movies a month. That's the stat you're looking at. But, you know, the age group on Xbox is older. Yeah. You know, this is just kids playing games anymore. And there's 25 million members around the and world. So in, and so in that sense, it's really easy to rack up. One billion entertainment But the hours. important thing to remember, too, is that for the large portion of, of Xbox Live's life, it has been U.S.-centric. It, is, it, hasn't it, has real, it hasn't branched out into the other countries. And now, all of a sudden, it's going to be expanding well, from 26 countries to 35 to in November. To yeah. yeah. So, you know, this and, and some of these are really big markets yeah. going into. Canada. Expect this to jump up a lot. Yeah, all the <laughs> Pierre left a wonderful comment on yesterday's show, where he where he said that that the only reason you that the reason you were the only Canadian that didn't take part in the poll to see who would buy Windows Phone Seven is because you've talked so much about it on the show. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. But you know who? Do you know? We also talked yesterday about the fact that Xbox, because of Kinect and because of Kinect appearing on Oprah, has got a massive jump in pre-order sales. Yeah. Well, now there's a whole other bunch of women that don't watch opera, but do watch Ellen Degenerated, uh, Degeneres. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she demonstrated Xbox Connect uh, on her show yesterday. I believe it was yesterday. We yeah. got hold of the video today. Yeah. It's ridiculously embarrassing. If I was her, I'd go kill myself now. Um, but... It's going to mean a huge boost in sales again. Well, did you see the crowd at the end of the show? Well, that's why I sent you the video. As soon as she said, you know, you're going to need a Kinect and an Xbox in order to play this, so I'm giving you both. The crowd went spastic. It was like worse than a bunch of, you know, 40-plus-year-old mommies at a Twilight convention when Robert Pattinson walked out on stage and if he was to throw Robert Pattinson-shaped dildos at them. <laughs> It was just ridiculous. <laughs> but, you know, for Microsoft, it's great. Oh, yeah. It's because, of course, it means more Connect units shifting and more Xboxes shifting. Well, just, not just that. It's, you know, all those moms are going to go home. They're going to be freaking heroes with their kids. Exactly. And, you know, as we've discussed before, Microsoft are building their domination in the living room, yeah. which means they're branding the generation of yeah. kids that are growing up now with X, with Microsoft as their entertainment yeah. choice. Speaking of entertainment, you, you, you've you got to give the folks at Microsoft Office Group just some massive kudos for this this one. What it is, folks, I ran across this totally by accident. What? You don't like it? This is uber <laughs> geeky, all right? This is beyond geek yeah but okay what it is folks is it's an excel worksheet that is an, <laughs> an ascii replaying of an acdc song do you do you do realize that in terms of development ascii never gets mentioned anymore no. most of the people watching the show have never heard, heard of, it. of ASCII. what it is folks folks is basically it's the term for 
for the characters on your keyboard. Yeah. And by, by different ASCII codes, you can determine what characters come up when you press a yeah. key. Uh, so just, basically, it's text. Yeah, to, to quickly go through this, no kidding, this is a quoting from the post. No, ki no kidding, here's what they did. They rendered the entire video as ASCII text and using Visual Basic to animate it at 12 frames per second. They had to do a little monkeying around with the video frames first, like convert them to black and white and ramp up the contrast. Then they found some ancient program that converted the image to ASCII. Seriously, when was the last time you heard of anyone mention ASCII? We had to jump through a lot of flaming hoops to get there, they said. Dude, the what this boils down to is, right? <laughs> it's an animation in an Excel sheet in text. Right? I'm ACDC. Yes. ACDC's, um, was it Rock and Roll Train? Is yeah. the track? Yeah. And, yeah, okay. Novelty value, high. Yeah. Geek value, astronomical. <laughs> astronomical. People who did this ever getting laid in their life? Never. Because <laughs> if this is what you spend 300 British pounds on. <laughs> I, I've lost words. Yeah. Let's go on to the next story. Uh, finally, the, the last one of, of the of the day is this. This one I, I came across today. It's out of the group at Channel Nine, which is um, Microsoft's video channel for developers, so on and so forth. But every apparently every Halloween they put out a special video, and this year it incorporated obviously the idea of Windows Phone Seven, and it's called the Killer App. Literally. Literally. That somebody developed a killer app yes. for Windows Phone 7. Very much like, what was the, um, what was that film where if they phoned you and you answered it, then you had, you know, you, you were going to die within 36 the hours box? or something? The box or the tape or... Yeah, yeah I think it was the box. Like, yeah. It's the same sort of concept, yeah. except somebody had developed a killer app. <laughs> For, uh, now, the, the acting is a little hokey. It, obviously, it's not professional acting, but man, I just sat. I was broad laughing when hey, I watched it. They're better thing. than they're better than Paris Hilton in that uh, what was it, uh, House of Wax? So you know, they're up there. <laughs> oh God! But anyway, take a minute, folks, and, and actually hit the link to watch the full video. Like we overlaid it, but take a minute. Yeah, and watch but it's, the whole it's about thing. seven and a half minutes yeah. long. But it yeah. is worth the watch yeah. for some cheap Halloween games. Oh yeah. Right, so I think that brings us to the end of the show. So, listen, if you agree with me that a lot of the stuff today was uber geeky, uh, too geeky, and you'd like to agree with me and tell Stephen, <laughs> drop us a line at 251-272-9633, or drop us an email at podcast at winextra.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave us a comment down below. Don't forget to thumb us up and hit the subscribe button so you get regular updates whenever we post the show. And finally, if you're not watching us on YouTube, drop along to winextra.com slash, or sorry, youtube.com slash winextra and hit the, side, the subscribe button. Uh, and on that note, folks, everybody have a good weekend, good Halloween with the kids, and uh, we'll be back Monday. And we promise that when we come back Monday, Stephen will have taken off the funny Halloween hairpiece that he's wearing. Kiss my royal Canadian hair. Goodbye, everybody.